in with American writer, director, and producer, Jonathan Kesselman. Welcome to the interview, John. Um, Jonathan is from LA originally or elsewhere? In America? Not from LA Los Angeles. Yeah, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, North Hollywood. And uh, when I was about 30, moved to New York for about 10 years and uh, met my Irish wife. And now I'm Irish or about to be Irish. And you're over here, I believe, since around 2018, is it? So I think it's 17 or 18. Yeah, so it's been four, over four years now. The pandemic has erased my concept of time and space, so I don't even know anymore. And tell me, did you stay in Ireland because of the pand pandemic or did you plan no, to move here anyway? I, 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 we moved here because Trump got elected and, um, you know, I'm pro, I'm pro democracy in democratic countries. And uh, yeah, America uh, was not a good place for us anymore. And also my son was turning school age and you know, uh, there's a whole, you know, there's a whole mass shooting thing there. And it's, you know, obviously the odds are incredibly small that anything would happen. But all the schools in America have these active shooter drills every month where they have to, like, pretend that a, a murderer is coming. Into, and so it's like, why, why are we raising our son here when we can go to a country where it's a little more sane and safe? And yeah. Where you are now um, between Dublin and Loud. Yeah, and mostly Dublin. The area between Nuri and Carlingford. Correct. The Irish coast. Beautiful spot. Yeah, it's, I love it up there. It's really, really lovely. So, John, tell me, you've obviously, between directing and producing, um, right, you've worked with a lot of uh, well-known actors, such as John Heard, Judy Gare, Jay Moore, Kevin McDonald's, Hank Azara, John Hamm, so forth and so on. You've done your homework. This is amazing. <laughs> now, on top of all that, um, yeah. uh, creating your own content, basically, you're films and your short films the hebrew hammer yep. uh which is which i thought was quite amazing that that was a short you had in college and then straight out of the gate became your first feature yeah it was a five minute black and white short that kind of became sort of a, a, a really popular at usc you went to school and then suddenly it got even more like yeah it it would it, it quickly blew up into a feature film which you know it's still kind of, I guess, what I'm most known for, and at least in America. It didn't really play here in Ireland, but in the States, it's kind of a cult comedy. And uh, yeah. But in the States, like, there's literally thousands and thousands of uh, screens, isn't there, that you could air a film on all over yeah. the country? Or well, you might have half a dozen chains, that's it? Yeah, you know, well, th there, I mean, it didn't, it was in theaters for, just for a second. Like, it was in, in very low budget independent film, and um, but it was shown on Comedy Central, which is a network, a cable network out there. Uh, for five years and it kind of built a cult following because that's where people kind of discovered it and then it was on DVD and so people kind of discovered it after it came out. So you, you've also worked in a lot of writers rooms for the likes of Disney, Nickelodeon, Comedy Central, Paramount, Sony, Fox, so forth. Yeah. Um, and from there you've also worked within the WWE writers room. I have, yeah. Now tell me, are you a wrestling fan? I am not. I am, I am not. I, I when I was a kid, I liked it, and then, uh, you know, at that particular time in my life, uh, it was before I made this movie. Actually, I was broke, and I got a call from a headhunter saying that someone had you know had recommended me, and I'm like, who? And they they couldn't tell me, and so I, you know, took a job because it was a really uh, lucrative, but. Um, yeah, it was, I will say this, it was the best paying worst job of my entire career so far. It was, it was an interesting experience. I was there for five months and then I got out quickly and uh, yeah, so. Um, That's yeah. a really positive way to put it. Um, so you were saying there about it was lucrative. So do they pay well, do they pay TV writers well compared to say a Disney writers room or? I think, well, yeah, I mean like they, they, they pay a lot of money because they know that they burn through writers like toilet paper. Well, you know, like, I don't know if you, yeah, I mean, like, when I was there, um, I was told the first day, uh, like, uh, don't give your two weeks notice if you're going to quit. Um, and I said, what? And, and they said, well, because they'll, the, they'll, you know, the last guy whose job you took, he gave his two weeks notice on Friday and they escorted him out of the building. And I was like, oh, okay. And while I was there, the guy who hired me was escorted out of the building. The head writer was quitting. The guy wrote, drove up with quit. Uh, another guy got fired. I mean, I went from like the junior guy in the room of five writers to one of the senior guys in within like the five months I was there. Wow, that's some yeah. turnover stuff. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, and it's a very toxic environment. I will say that. No, um, I know at the moment Stephanie McMahon, who is Vince McMahon's daughter, she has a push on 
for uh, hiring more female writers. So while you were there, as far as I know, there was, you correct me if I'm wrong, in 2014, there was two female writers, Jennifer Bloodsworth and yep. Kimberly Ham Ham Hamilton. When I was there, you were there. Yeah, just it was. Uh, I was with her, Jenner Kim, one of them, and she and she was great. Uh, she had worked there before. I think she either quit or was fired. And then, as right when I was about to leave, or right when I left, she came on a couple weeks before I, I left, and she was cool. I, I thought she was great. Um, yeah, and I, I forgot it was it Kim or Jen. I think it was Kim, but um, but only only one female writer when I was there. So it was a very male uh, centric work work environment. But yeah, a lot there's obviously plans to make it more female friendly. Now, when you were there in 2014, um, that was the year Ultimate Warrior went into the Hall of Fame. And he did Raw the next night. And following that, he died of a heart attack. Yeah. So his wife, Dana Warrior, she's now one of the top writers for WWE. Flashing oh, cool. forward six, seven years later. Um, also, at the moment, you have Jennifer Pepperman, I believe. She is. She's done a lot of soaps, writing and won, won several awards as such. So it is from people who are in wrestling, who are either wrestling fans or work in the business. You always hear a lot of complaints of they shouldn't hire people with no knowledge. But at the same time, you either hire people who only have knowledge of wrestling. You don't have that experience, intelligence, it, and yeah. Well, it was stuff. also it, it was interesting because when I I mean I can only speak from my experience. And I, you know. It was half. It was divided. Half the people were sort of film and TV writers uh, from New York or LA. The other half were wrestling sort of fans that kind of came up as writers. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, the the truth of the matter is, is that what whatever is written or come up it, it, or conceived is rewritten the night of by Vince anyway. So it doesn't really make a difference. There, there's you know, so much work is put in and thrown out the last minute anyway. So it didn't you know. And I wrote some stuff that got on the air, but like then also seeing stuff that gets on. Sometimes you ha you're you're giving it to people who are not actors, or not even close to being able to even, you know, deliver a line or a joke. And it was like watching some stuff that I, I wrote that was really I thought really good, and Vince liked and like just to get destroyed by just bad you know people not understanding what they're what they're actually saying uh, was interesting to see that as well. Um, Can you give an example of what that was? Was promo? I, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to do that because it's like you know. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm bad mouthing a, a, a person who's a wrestler, you know, or, or people who are wrestlers who are good at a certain thing, a, a, a skill. Exactly. They don't have. And I, I, I agree with you. I don't like to just hold bad mouthing back. But what I was asking about was just what was it a promo? It was so a promo. Yeah, you, yeah. The, it was a promo on like basically playing. You know. It was there's that it wasn't for Jack Swagger, but there was characters in the Jack Swagger story. Do you, do you remember the Jack Swagger yeah. thing? I'm trying to do because I it was like a you know basically it, the Tea Party stuff was really kicking off, and that's that's how America's kind of gone. And I wrote a whole thing, sort of you know uh, uh, I got you on Jack Swagger with two other characters, and uh, yeah, and it was really good about immigration, and it was funny, and it was but it didn't yeah it uh yeah. And there was a guy who was part of like Dutch Mantel, who obviously is a wrestling veteran. Mm. And he's uh, well able to talk. Uh, he's around a long time. So I, that's what I find is interesting when you have your old school wrestling personalities and mindsets compared to creative mindsets, such as yourself and other writers that come through, is uh, a clash. Would you, would you clash often with wrestling people on what your ideas or other writers' ideas are? No. No? That's interesting. No. no it was, we, uh, we're, we're, everyone, 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 like, I, I always find any, any writers or any people creatively put together to try to make something good are going to try to make something good. So it's just, you know, they're, everyone's going to do the best they can do with the environment and the, the people. And yeah, and the clash was, I think the wrestling culture, um, when people come off the road, cause you know, I was on the home team, meaning I was, I was in Stanford, Connecticut, um, you know, and every week the, the, you know, the people on the road would come back in and the writers from the road, writer producers. And there was a culture from the road of like, just it was like high school, bad high school, like bullying. And I don't know what you guys call high school here, secondary school. Just bullying and like just stupid shit. Like I, I didn't realize I had to like dig back into my high school brain to figure out how to deal with like you know uh, uh, meatheads. I guess you know it was just uh, there was one there was one one writer I liked a lot. He was another Hollywood kind of guy. Very, he was a little too earnest and he was too honest and too open. And they 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 picked him and they basically people were just bullying him. It was embarrassing and it was hard to watch. 
And at one point early on, he was Jewish also. One of the writers from the road, you know, was like, trying, he was testing me and coming up to me. And I said, you got the wrong Jew. And I looked him in the eye and I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't have kicked his ass. But it's like, I knew that I had to basically sort of say, fuck you. You're not going to fuck with me. And then he backed off. And it was just like, are you kidding me? Am I doing this at, at work? Like, this is so, it's so stupid. It was, it's so juvenile. And yeah, no, but it was it's hard to see some of that stuff. Like, uh, yeah. And can you tell us when you're standing up for yourselves like that, was there any backlash? No, I mean, it's respect. I mean, that, that's how it works, you know, but if you don't stand up for yourself, then you're fucked. And I know that. I mean, that's high school. That That's like, that's, that's my 15 year old brain going, oh, I remember how to do this stuff now. Pretend that I can fight and, and, and be scary. You know what I mean? So and it's very important to stand up for yourself anywhere, regardless if it's in a, a writer's room or you're in the gym or wherever you are. Like, so, yeah, of course. So it's like, and I, I just, you know, I just, I, I, for me, I really, really early on realized this job was not um conducive to getting the best work out of people and not a positive experience and not it was just basically keep your head down and get paid because otherwise it's just you know any and anything you do is not going to be is going to get rewritten anyway so it, it i and i had no personal yeah I, I just wanted to pay off some debt and get out and make my next movie which i did so brilliant yeah now, when you were there in 2014 uh there's a few writers i let throw out the names of there when you were there uh, and yeah. there's one chap, he's the head writer now, or he's one of the top guys, Ryan Callahan. Did you work with him in 2014? No, it was like my, the head writer was Dave Kreisman, he's a great guy. He he was a soap opera guy who came off of, like, he was you know, the youngest soap opera head writer for, like, uh, Days of Our Lives, I think, or one of those shows. Um, he was a good guy. Kevin Eck was there. Uh, 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 Lo Foz, just, um, uh, that's his nickname. Everyone had nicknames. Day one, I walk in. You know, do you have a nickname? I'm like, nope. I'm like, we're gonna call you Sex Machine. I'm like, okay, you know, Sex Machine for the five months I was there. I was like, all right. Um, very unique nickname. Any reason behind it? No, it was just, you know, trying, you know. No, it was like, a, it, it was, that was written, that, that, that nickname was, come, it was, it was devised from one of the less creative uh, folks at the WWE Raiders room. Um, yeah, some of the other people who would have been there as well when you were there, Daniel Mat Matlaga. Daniel who? Matt Lager. No, I don't know. Nope. Zach Hyatt. Zach, yeah. Brian Gearwitz, was he there when you were there? I met Brian once. He wasn't there. He was, he was, he's Rock's writer, right? He, he's Rock's partner. Is that the same Brian Gearwitz? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. With... I, I, I had a meeting with him because Vince wasn't happy with something and he was like, you have to go back and meet. So we all went to his apartment and he gave us a, like, you know, I'm sure he got paid a lot of money to talk to us for, you know, an hour. But uh, Brian, he wasn't there. He had left. He, the Rockets sort of tapped him to be his producing partner slash writer, and so he had left the WWE. And can we tell us, in 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 your opinion, with the WWE, you would have a lot of professional writers come in, say from soap operas and so forth, but it never seems to work the opposite way. People who would have cut their teeth as writers in WWE wrestling. No, no, that's not true. No, no, there, there's one guy who came in who was great. I forgot his name. He wrote for the online magazine, I think. And in he... Yeah, I think that's when he was, it was a fan, I forgot his name. It's been a long time. And he, he came in, he was great, great ideas. He was a good guy, good energy. He was he was great. But, you know, I mean, he came in through WWE. Well, he's a prime example. But the, the point I'm trying to get across is, so when he leaves the WWE, all of his jobs primarily were within wrestling when it came to writing creativity. Yeah. He didn't go to work in any other writing rooms for other TV brands or other movies. I, don't, I, I have no idea what happened after. And I think actually... After I left, maybe a few months after, Vince fired the entire staff because like his stock went down, and so he just blamed the writers' room and he fired all. He fired the entire staff of writers. So every, all these writers I knew and liked a lot, um, I was trying to help them find other work, and you know it was horrible because certain guys. I'm not. I don't want to mention names. One guy was a huge wrestling fan, and he was he was on the staff for the entire time I was there. He's, he was Kevin Eck. He's fucking fantastic. Great writer. Good guy. And he he'd given his life to that company, and then like for whatever reason, Vince just fired everybody in that room at the one time and he'd been there for like years and it was kind of like uh yeah that was disappointing because you know he was he was his heart was really into wrestling i think it still is he has a podcast i don't know what he does but he's a diehard wrestling guy also a good writer a decent guy and it was just like yeah i mean he should stay there so can we tell us then so, so we, I, I think there's no union for writers there are no there is i mean the writers guild of america but i don't believe 
that uh, WWE is a member, uh, an affiliate member. I don't see, I don't think any brighter from the WGA is long there and long enough for them to become unionized anyway. But I got paid way more than I would get on, on like on a, a you know, like the, the, it wasn't. They pay you so well that you don't, you know, and they burn through people so quickly. And it's like, it, honestly, it's Vince's company. He can do whatever that he wants. It's, you know, it's and ultimately he does. And and I got to be honest with you, you know, it's not like it's complicated material. It's you know heels and baby faces, and you go, you go through each guy until he's gone through everybody else. And you flip them to you know you do a turn and flip, and it's, it's you know last week on Raw you said that the Rock was gonna hurt my mama. Well, this week you know it's like it's not. Uh, like the best advice I got from a writer was, just look at old '80s bad action movies for like dialogue ideas. I'm like, oh, that's it. <laughs> and yeah, and that's kind of it. It's it's a soap opera for, for 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 kids. That's what it is for 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 15 year olds. And uh, I didn't understand the extent and reach and how popular it was until I, I went on the road and I went to some uh, house show. I forgot where it was, middle of nowhere, America. They flew me out to look at the show and it was like insane. How I mean, you know, people were so how much people loved it which is you have to respect that so you know something is so popular you know all, all respect to that or, you know vince and what he's done with that now, me, in your opinion do you think fans get behind it because of how the show is wrote because of the writers or do you think it's because of the talent themselves how they connect with the audience i think it's both probably i mean because you know the talent comes and also look no I'll, I'll i will tell you what i was impressed by you know so like, like I mentioned, the stuff's rewritten anyway the night of Vince throws everything out at last minute and writes a new script. And so these performers are given like a five minute promo or something, a four minute promo, and they have to memorize it and go out in front of live television and basically like nail and sell it. And like there's no multiple takes. And some of these guys were just, I was amazed how they could just go out there and do it. And again, it's not like not, not doing Shakespeare, they're not memorizing, you know, but it was sort of that I was impressed by that. I mean, excellent. And I was also impressed by uh, watching how they work, you know, watching wrestlers pre-match work out the fight. Um, it reminds me of what, like when I'm directing and I sit with my, my, my DP and we're working out how we're going to shoot it and how we're blocking, we, we call it blocking, which is how, you know, who's moving where, what they're doing. So that way, when I, all the actors and, 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 and extras come in, I can basically have it sort of laid out for them and then it, to make it easier to shoot. And it was sort of watching them do that. It was sort of, it's the same process, watching them sort of visualize Then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then we move here. And, and it was like, that was kind of cool to watch too. Thanks. So what you're talking about there, how would you describe how a beat works in when you're writing uh, wrestling on the TV show? Together? Well, see, the, the word beat is a, it, it's a ubiquitous word in film, TV and in wrestling. And, well, first of all, in, in, in film and television, beat means number of things. A beat is like a pause in a script, right? A, a beat is also a story point. Uh, a beat can also be um, uh, uh, like for, for actors, a beat is anytime there's a change in behavior or emotion you want to see or that happens on a script and they're, they're like analyzing the script, that's a beat. In wrestling, I don't, I don't forget what a beat is, but like wrestling has its own language. It was like a nothing was... <laughs> You know, I've been doing this for 20 years and I'm trained as a film and TV writer and uh, none of the language, uh, like part of my job is understanding what the hell what people were talking about because this is a different jargon. I think that's from the 50s yeah. carnivals, you know, like promos are scenes. Um, dial it's not dialogue, it's verbiage. Um, you know, everyone's got a gimmick. What's the gimmick, you know, um, which is interchangeable for any other word on the planet. Uh, Heels, baby faces, turns, all this stuff, it's like their own language. And that's was interesting too. It's like its own little unique bubble of it's not film and TV. Like they they came up with their own sort of words for stuff. And that's not sort of it's outside of anything I've ever seen before. Now, Taylor, as you were saying there earlier on how you went on the road. I know with um, the writers, you would have your your home crew, I believe it is, in Stanford, and you yeah. then you would have a writer's crew that would go on the road. I think yeah. you, you did both, did you? I did the home, and then near the end of it, uh, it was an honor to be put on the road, and it, which was not an honor for me because I had, a, you know, my now wife, and you know, being the road is pretty grueling because, like, uh, you fly out somewhere on Sunday, and then you get up on Monday and you work like twelve hours, and then you go to bed, you go to your hotel, you get up like at four in the morning and drive to the next because you can't fly to the next place because you know. If a plane is delayed, you're screwed. So they make you drive to the next place for a couple hours away. You get there like at seven, eight in the morning. At ten, you go do another twelve-hour day. Then you 
fly back and you don't get a day off. You have to go into the office in Stanford, which for me was an hour and a half commute each way from New York. And so like you literally had, it was just ex- grueling. And then on top of that, like uh, I, I had a really bad experience on the road because um, I got, I got caught out because I, I don't actually, I didn't, you know, I, I, you know, you're supposed to do homework and watch the show every Monday. Like after, after spending, you know, ridiculous hours writing stuff, if they make you watch, you know, the three hour raw in its entirety and then do a report, like, like you're in high school again, like a report about what you saw, and, you know, and I, I just, I just, you know, go to the, 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 your sites, basically, I go to your website and, you know, just transcribe what was going on. And um, so I never, I never had a look at the announcers because I don't, that wasn't the stuff I was writing. I was writing promos and, you know, I was writing all different kinds of things and things I was assigned and storylines. And I remember introducing myself to one of the announcers, and I still can't remember his name because you know I, I know in that world they're big deals, but like, and the egos of these guys were w- way bigger than movie stars that I've dealt with, you know. And I was like, you know, oh, hi, I'm John, and you know, and and you know, he's like, well, thanks for coming out, welcome. I'm like, and you are. He looked at me, and so the meeting with Vince suddenly, one of the other announcers comes out and is like, you even watch the show, and he's like making a huge scene about how I, you know, didn't know who the other guy was, and I'm, I was like. I gotta be honest with you guys. I worked with movie stars that had less egos, and you guys are just ridiculous. Like, just stop. And it was so embarrassing. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's a story I'll bring up uh, in a moment uh, that comes back to that. But could you take us through the writers' rooms between your junior, your senior writers, your lead writers? What roles are in the room, and how many writers? Well, when I was there, it was five writers. And then there was a head writer. Head writer is basically sort of he's the head writer. He, you know, he's getting he's getting everybody to engage with ideas and plot up storylines. He's given missions of events. You know, I want to know what the, you know, each pay per view storyline is from here to there for the year. Sometimes you're assigned. You know, I want you to come up with characters. Other times, you know, I want you to write this promo. Everybody does that stuff, and then ultimately the head writer is going to take that stuff and then re- write a draft of the script. So he working crazy hours, take you know, um, and then. Uh, yeah, and so for the road guys, they would go out and work. You know, each guy kind of is assigned to a wrestler or two wrestlers, and basically, you know, works with them to make the script more them, and kind of produce the segments. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. So, when you go in, then, so do you have what needs to be fixed by a head writer or a lead writer, or do you all give your input? No, we all give our input. So we're sitting in a room, whiteboard, coming up with storylines, coming up, you know. Uh, um, and then like once we kind of you know, dial in on something we like, then it's like, you know, throwing ideas out and then, you know, basically whatever the head writer likes the best, he'll take. It's like any writer's room. It's like everyone's, you know, basically for breaking story, which is like, you know, what happens from here to here and how do we get from here that are there looking at the map, like pitching matches, so who should fight who and why. And then, like, this is where the wrestling guys, their expertise came in. Well, it's, he can't fight him because five years ago this happened and that happened. And, this, you know, um, you know, yeah, just every day was a little different. But, um, you know, the fun stuff was getting to write, you know, when the, you're signed to the promo or whatever. But that was some days and some days you're just pitching matches. And, yeah. So with the workload, the way you described it, it sounded like it was almost seven days a week. Well, when you're on the road, it's like six days a week. Uh, uh, when I was... When I was on the home team, it was five days a week. But like my first day, this is my first day at work. I get there and the guy who was sort of not the head writer, but the head, the, the main guy creative. And he was he was the guy who hired me, who got fired ultimately. He um he had us there till midnight for I because Vince was unhappy. And but nothing was getting done. It was just we're keeping here till midnight as a punishment kind of thing. And it was sort of like, okay, this is day one. I'm like, and remember I have an hour and a half commute back to New York after so I get out at twelve, twelve thirty in the morning and I have to go on a train back to New York. So I'm not home until like three in the morning or something like that. It was just like, okay, this is day one of this. This is great. And when you were paid, were you paid just a, a, an annual fee or like you described there, would you get a premium? So if you're no, no, I, I, was, hour, I, I was at a salary. And so, you know, by that salary, I get paid, you know, it wasn't bi-weekly or whatever it was. So yeah. like if you're working on a Sunday, you don't get paid any extra. It's just all part no. of the ones. Just, yeah. That's I mean, but you're making so much money that you don't, you, ha- you go along for the ride. So what with the money you're getting paid, do you feel like you're selling out to get the money? Or do Absolutely. you feel as a well, human being? No. I don't know. I, I, no, initially when I was like, oh, this could be really fun. Wrestling is like, I loved it, loved it as a kid, do some creative stuff. 
and very early on, I'm like, yeah, they don't want that. Like, they don't want any, like that, that was shut down. That was that was hammered at me completely. Like nobody, you know, they they don't want to get the best out of the writers. That wasn't the intention. It was just to have, you know, people doing stuff for Vince that Vince ends up throwing out anyway. It was just it's just, just a people. I'll put it to you this way: Vince is friends with Trump, and he's friends with this guy David Pecker, another guy I've worked for. Who the, he's, he he I did a, a film for him. I did the uh, Mr. Olympia 2012 opening video. And David Pecker runs Nash, uh, uh, um, AMI, American Media Inc. Or used to, he's the you know the National Enquirer was his, you know and Muscle and Fitness. He was the one who basically that for Trump was catching and killing all those porn star stories, and he, the FBI basically indicted him and then he like he to resign. But they're all friends and he, it's similar kind of mentality where it's just these are severely damaged people who are, had really horrible childhoods who just roll over people like they just basically their whole part of existence is to put their thumb on people to shit on people and i don't know how else to put it but that stuff and i've seen it with really these billionaires you know and i and 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 it's awful behavior and it's horrible to see and you can see why they're successful because they just they bully people and they they run things with fear and it's it's not worth it it's just not it's not <laughs> life is too short and you know there's other people that are much much more enjoyable to work with and for who kind of get the process and get creativity and this was not that was there was that wasn't encouraged and that wasn't what was wanted it was more of just a, a more people to sort of exercise their demons their shit onto i don't know how else to put it but really and that that behavior that because he would do it to the head writers i mean he had this vince had this thing where he would make he'd have, he'd have a um meetings with the head writers and, and a writing assistant like at friday he called the meeting at like at 5 p.m but then he wouldn't let he wouldn't take the meeting until 10 p.m so he make them sit outside his office and they haven't eaten and then he would you know call them in like nine or ten at night and then sort of say uh he had this rule where he can't he can eat in front of you but you can't eat in front of them so they're starving he's eating a sandwich in front of them at 10 at night they want to be home with their families on a friday and that happened every friday you know and then it's shit like that and so that and then the screaming on the road that behavior would come back if people have all this like negative ah, and they just they dump it on everybody else and it's just like and it this all rolls downhill so that's interesting now when you were in college you were studying psychology weren't you yeah that was my i was I actually then i ended up uh, working in a neuroscience lab i thought i was gonna be a neuroscientist for a bit it's a huge difference to a, an entertainment writer isn't it yeah, well, I was having a midlife. I thought I was going to do it, and I spent a year uh, in a lab slicing rat brains. And I kind of realized I don't want to do this. If this is what it is, I don't, I don't want to do research and slice rat brains. And then I remember seeing a documentary on your show of shows, which is a, a very famous 1950s uh, variety show, Sid Caesar. But it had every great comedy writer in it. It was Mel Brooks, Carl Reiner, Woody Allen, Neil Simon. And I just this documentary just spoke to me. I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that. And so that was my midlife, and that was my existential crisis in my 20s but, but there you go. it's interesting but psychology really is everything in life when you think about yeah. it and with wrestling the story you were describing your characters what kind of person do you think stays working in an environment like that long term decade <laughs> after decade uh you know i had a a friend who died and this friend was the guy who brought me in to meet david pecker at ami a different company it's equally kind of toxic environment and he was a wonderful guy his name was sean and uh sean bodybuilding was his life and so and he was a great writer and he got to be the editor-in-chief of muscle and fitness magazine and david pecker was bipolar when screaming him in meetings and you know he would give him david what he like you know give him a magazine cover and he was like i didn't ask for that even though he had asked for it and then he yelled you know but he stayed on everybody else had burned out and he stayed on because he loved bodybuilding so much like that was his life and this was the 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 ultimate job for him you know, even though he was abused and shit on by this guy, he loved it so much he stayed. So I you think you have to love that thing so much to take that kind of abuse. Or just also know how to navigate it. You know, you get good at both. You know, if you're good at bullying, if you become like the, you know, the if you kind of adopt Vince's sort of uh, mindset and, and, and interact with people that way and then kind of look, look after yourself and keep your head down when it comes to Vince, then you'll probably thrive. But like, you know. I didn't like wrestling enough and I didn't like, I, I will not tolerate being treated. I don't like, like, I don't like working for other people. I like working with people. And that wasn't the environment there. It wasn't about working with people. It was about, you know, basically, 
Yeah, I, I, I don't. Yeah, there you go. It's a volleyball almost. You no, know, it looks survival. I remember my wife. Not my wife. I was like, I was shell shocked from this. I'm like, what the? And she would like send me off to work with a packed lunch and like just you can make it through just one more month. And I was like, it was that bad. I was like, I've never had a job like that before in my entire life where I was like just dreading. It was like depressing to go to work because I was just it was so miserable, so miserable. And I can tell us. So we're you're going through there, and obviously uh, it's it's changed now in 2021. Ah, ah, ah. You, you would, one would think I have no idea, but I, I doubt it. I doubt it, that company. No, but, but it changes in like with the contracts now with performers. Okay. Um, you can be hired on a Monday and fired on a Friday. Well, that was happening there too. And if Vince didn't like somebody for whatever reason, like there was a great wrestler, I forgot his name, and he was also kind of a good actor. And he was dating Amy, Amy Schumer. And Dolph I don't Ziegler, know why. Was he? Yeah, 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 Dolph Ziegler. And Vince didn't like him for some reason. Like something happened. Like he didn't have the right attitude. Something that wasn't even like cleared to anybody. And I don't know if he knew this, but the writers all talked about it. And then Vince just decided he didn't like him. And then basically kind of almost wrote him off the show. And he was already, he's actually popular on the show. Like he got good ratings. Like, you know, like you look at the ratings and like who, who's popping and what, you know. And it was just Vince had something, some sort of skeleton in his closet or some issue from his childhood that he saw something in this guy and he just suddenly decided i'm not just you know i'm yeah and he was great john tell me so when you were there in 2014 two of the wrestlers who were on the roster yeah were comedy wrestlers their gimmicks were comedy so and you obviously having a a, a passion and a, a history for comedy writing did you write for santino morella and damien zandel they were the two comedy characters. I did, I, I did, but like, I mean, I, I didn't write them. I didn't write for them specifically, but they were on the show, and I, you know, I mean, so um, I wrote some comedy bits that were, like I mentioned, one was great. It wasn't those two guys, and they got just it got slaughtered. And then I, I wrote some something else that didn't get on that should have gotten on with another wrestler I thought was really great. And I forgot his name. Uh, there's another really funny but really good wrestler. He's short and he's got a beard. Talented guy. Uh, can you tell me who I'm talking about? It's been so um, long. I can't. <laughs> he was very popular at the time. Uh, can you, can you, do, you, do you have the roster of wrestlers in front of you from 2014? I do indeed. Um, they had, I think you roughly had around 60 or 70 at the time, people on the roster. Um, I'm just in airplane mode here. Okay. So writing comedy. Uh, for arguments like Comedy Central, Paramount shows you're wrong compared to wrestling comedy. Yeah. What's the differences? Uh, they don't have a sense of humor. They wouldn't know funny if 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 I explained if I explained it to them. And, and, and I had to go to a. They hired some guy to do uh, some promo and some you know like on location, and he it was a comedy bit and he completely like just he ter he shot it terribly. He didn't know how to direct the actor, and it was just like watching. You know, it didn't. It doesn't. No one's gonna be like, "Oh, you're funny, you're a comedy guy. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna trust you and listen to you and give, give you bits." It just didn't work that way. And I learned that, you know, trying to get stuff. I mean, it was just at a certain point you have to go like, you know what? I'll I'm here to do what you need me to do. Um, the, the two guys there, I feel who might be are Daniel Bryan or Eugene. Daniel Bryan, amazing. Daniel. I wrote a great bit for. It never got on. I wrote a great bit for Daniel Bryan. That would have been perfect. And just didn't get past the head writer. It should have. It was really funny, I thought. That's unfortunate. He's wrestling still these days. So he's talented. Like, I liked him. Because he, he, like, the guys I respected were the guys who could act and who could wrestle. And he was he was both those things. He was he he was charismatic and he, you know, he was smart and he, he could wrestle. Paul Heyman, actually, I, I almost cast Paul Heyman in this movie. He was considering it and then he ended up not doing it. That, and so John Hurd played Paul Paul Heyman's I cast John Hurd instead, but I wanted Paul Heyman because Paul Heyman was a great actor. Like, and I spent some time with him on the road, and I was like, he's a good actor. He should be doing stuff. Like, he you know he can he can act. Like, and I see him. They gave him this 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 verbiage, this copy, this dialogue, and doing these promos, and he would just you know, spend an hour, two hours. And I'm like, this guy is good. This guy could do other stuff if he wanted to. But yeah, you know. why do you think he hasn't? I, he didn't. I mean, he just, he's because he probably makes a lot of money, and he is, you know, he is the whatever success or he feels he wants. I mean, what, I wanted him for this movie. He almost did it, and then he decided he didn't want to do it. Maybe it's I don't know. Whatever it's, it's whatever's going on in his head. I, I I think he's great. I work with him. I put him in something. 
if you're interested. He's known as in wrestling, he's known as a very creative person. Um and doing what? You know, he's done some screen wrote some screenplays and what another so and he has an advertising agency for yeah. um, might be great, for huh? entertainers. Yeah, no, he's he's great and uh he's I, I liked him. I thought he was I thought he was talented. So John, just before we move on to some other stuff, just before we wrap up. Yeah. So would you advise to an up and coming writer for an experience point of view to go work in the WWE to see Eric and say the negative side of it to prepare them well, as a strong no. person? I mean, like if, if you want to uh, endure a horrible work environment and sure, if that's, you know, but I, I would never, I would, I mean, people, I, I, some, I forgot who, somebody put me in some, touch somebody else who was a massive wrestling fan and a writer wanted me to put, I'm like, look, I, I could connect you to people, but like I'm just for your own mental health. I don't think it's a good place for you. I don't think you don't know what this is that you're getting yourself into, because it's it's not gonna you're not gonna last in that environment, and if you do, you're gonna be miserable. And so, you know, I I, I just would you know I would say run for the hills. Don't go work there. I mean, I, I'm also to put it like if someone said to you, you know, you have this you have this job, but you know your boss throws staplers at your head. Should, should, like I want to own a job there. Would you be like, yeah, come on in, have your have a staple thrown at your head? You know, not that that happens, but it's like you know, I know people worked for Scott Rudin, and they finally got to tell their story after the fact, and it was like horrible for them. You know, so would you want anybody you like who's interested in something to go somewhere where they're going to get treated like shit? No. I would say don't. Go. Thank you for that, John. We'll move on. For, that's quite it's getting quite heavy. That conversation. So we'll.